hope I got everything dialed in, but still paying attention. Have to pay attention quite a bit here, though. As I'm in Flaxstar right now. Um, those of you that are newer to the channel, or and some that do remember, just for refresher, this field last year got hailed on. It was flaxseed. As you can see, like how much like straw there is yet. Um, or it's, you know, <laughs> a lot of it got hailed on, so it was damaged and laid over, so uh, I gotta kind of pay attention to the drill here quite a bit here, make sure I don't see any hair pinning going on. I got out once, the back, way or the front left disc was, had stuff in it, so that ground's still kind of wet, yeah, it looks a lot drier though from the tractor now, but uh, yeah, just not really prime conditions for this field because of the flax straw on here, but I got a little extra depth, a little more down pressure. I'm backing off on my speed a little bit too. I'm not going as fast. I'm going between five to five and a half. Usually we go between five and a half and six most of the time. When the going's decent, you know. At least this year, I'm thankful for the soil moisture. But it's a little wet though. Just making do here, but my next field though I have to do, it's soybean stubble, so I'm probably gonna back off down pressure a little bit then. Not as much trash on there. So it'll do a little better job on, on its own then don't need the extra down pressure. I'll have to check my seed depth, make sure it looks somewhat consistent. Yep, seeding the Durham. My measly 70 acres that I have to do, so. But for my rotation though, that's about it. Yeah, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be looking looking behind me quite a bit here, and kind of look at my last pass to make sure I don't see anything like pushing. So that I'm kind of looking for here something you know. Usually, especially the outsides, you'll see it. You know, you'll see tra a trail. You know, where you can tell. Um, but in the middle though, it's kind of tough because you can't really see behind you. Only thing you can really do is look by the disc see if you can't see anything. So. It's been about, what was that, a week and a half now since we last seeded, or tried to seed. Because, uh, well, this tractor, and of course the weather then too, not helping. So, but boy, that was an expensive bill, holy cow. Okay, so the seal that went out, I mean, yes, it's the rear engine seal, I guess you could call it, but it's actually called the rear crankshaft seal. It's essentially the, the gasket that, where it kinda, you know, binds the engine to the transmission together, in, in one sense, is what, it, is what it kinda does. So, to get access to that, they had to yank the engine out. <laughs> and so, you know, Half the cost to fix the tractor was, you know, labor costs. It was that was over half. I think that was like 60. That was probably like 65 percent of the bill, or 70 percent maybe. What did it cost? I think it cost 5,300 dollars to get the tractor fixed. It probably would have been more expensive. If we would have taken it to a dealer, because the place we took it to was it's actually in Calm, North Dakota. There's a service center there. They used to be a private New Holland Case IH dealer, but then they were bought out by Titan Machinery back in the late 2000s or something like that, whenever it was. I forget for sure when they were, but of course, then they were closed down by all the Titan Machinery store closings then. You know, they were closed down, Kintyre was closed down in our area. And, uh, but what they did though is a lot of former employees in the area kept that store open and turned into a service service shop instead. Any make and model machine, they say bring it in, we'll fix it. So and their labor rates are cheaper than Titan and so we're like, well, why not? <laughs> One of the mechanics there has a TG Tractor, so he's familiar with them. So I don't know if he, he wasn't the guy that actually worked on it, but he just kind of oversaw it a little bit and whatnot, so but, um, but yeah, they had, to, they had the whole engine yanked out 
Of course, when they had the engine out, then there were some other things we had to do, some hydraulic lines, hoses needed to get changed. And, uh, you know, since it's a lot easier access, you know, there are some of those things need to get changed. I know we were we were monitoring, there were some leaky hoses, so got them changed real easy. Um, of course, new air conditioner compressor, the pulley was, was I mean, it, it was going out. You know, it's the past couple of years that we've had to recharge the air conditioner the past two years. And, you know, that probably was the reason, it could have been a reason why the compressor was going out. So we had to get a new compressor. And, uh, of course, when they had, they had the engine ripped out, you know, of course, new gaskets on everything, of course, you know, and uh, uh, we had them inspect the engine too, you know, do adjustments on it, on the valves and everything, and just inspect the overall engine on it. And you know, for the most part, the guy, the guy said it's in pretty good, pretty good condition. So he said it looks like it's well taken care of, the machine. So I mean, we we, we do our part, <laughs> try to do what we can. But uh, there was another part called the damper. So he said that had excessive play on it. So while they had everything torn apart. I know they replaced something else, another gasket underneath there while they had the engine out, just because, well, why not? You're that far, you might as well just go put some new gaskets in and seals in and while you're in that deep, you know, it's just, just one of those things. Might as well hit, hit five birds with one stone, <laughs> pretty much. So all for a, for a gasket, you know, rear crankshaft seal. Expensive little bill. She got the tractor back, and it, I mean, once we, I seen him at Alpha Fisher. Once we got the tractor back, he was put to work right away, disking a little bit, and now next day now we're back. I'm seeding now. So the flax seed, I think, I don't know. We'll have to see once here. Uh, we got a no-till and some flax, of course, but then we got the organic stuff to do then. So. That's probably what we're gonna tackle next, just because the ground for no-till just still isn't quite dry enough yet. I mean, it's borderline right now. You know, it's paying attention to the drill back here. You know, it's, it's not prime conditions, but we're so late in the year now, it's just, <clears throat> you gotta get going. The Durham is way far behind. You already have that sucker stuff planted mid-April, hopefully. Just wasn't gonna happen this year, though too cold and wet for too long just now the thing I'm concerned about now is if the water decides to shut off now where we don't get any rain now I don't know I mean, you guys you can all see there's hardly any dust there's just a little bit of dust just a tiny bit that should tell you a lot of the conditions here it's just this is how it's been there hasn't been the only dust i've seen all year really is on the gravel roads that's that's it you know shouldn't really complain because you know we finally have ample moisture in the springtime but there's a limit though there's a limit i mean you know you do need some timely rains in the springtime just to get the keep the ground soft and stuff growing but it's got to kind of be semi-dry so that you can get crops planted and whatnot that's that's the key you gotta get stuff in a timely manner or else, you know, that's what I'm worried about. The water shuts off or if it goes straight from winter to summer, like it goes from cold temps all the way up to 70, 80 degrees then and just cooks everything then, or even 90 degrees, like what happened last year too, seeding the soybeans last year. Had a day in May uh, over 90 degrees. That was hot. I see that there in alfalfa oats right now, and there was that other piece too where I was at too. I see that because it's just so much, it's hilly, um, a little gravelly, it dips from when they dug everything out. And, uh, it's just, it's hard to seed, hard to spray, hard to combine, so it's like, well, I'd mother rather take a mower and a rake there instead way easier way easier <laughs> the equipment gets bigger you don't want to have tight areas it just it sucks <laughs> sure everything's going smooth here I gotta take a look at the track too in a while here too make sure everything looks hunky-dory so 
Oh, here's where the fun begins, I guess. Let's get to that point here. Yeah, it's already a little slimy here already. Sensitive sensors, as I call them. <laughs> They're too sensitive. They take offense to everything. <laughs> we got a few of them that are like that. I think, I don't remember if that's one of them or not. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. It's dirty down two notches. I said I'm not going as fast either. <laughs> now, if it was multiple, you know, sensors going off on that same tower back there, and then, yeah, that would throw a huge red flag Then that I'd have to pop the cap open on the tower then. Probably something stuck in there then, but nothing in there though. Spain, if those wheels start, casters start pushing dirt, you're in trouble. <laughs> and then a lot of screwing around then, that's about it. <laughs> Always screwing around then. The little areas with potholes. It's always fun. seated through that little piece well actually the second time never mind first year I rented it didn't get through it because the slough was this was full of cattails down here now it's just a, two little potholes now that's right how could I forget 